Hi everyone, um, welcome to lecture 2A of stress related illness and the immune system. Um, I'm Miss Maduka. Make sure that you've gone and look, um, taken a look at lectures 1 and 1A as well to catch yourself up. Again, um, for this particular lecture, we're looking and focusing on key examination questions that have ever been asked in psychology AQA A specification. And again, if you remember from lecture two, we are focusing on only these two key studies. Yeah, so don't rack your brain and remember more than you need to, yeah, because we haven't got time for that. Okay, so look at a typical question that could be asked if eased ourselves in nicely. So this is a typical um, graph which shows obviously look as a correlation between two variables. So variable one is scores on a stress questionnaire and another variable is a number of days of work in a year through illness. Okay, so these are two completely different things and what they've looked at to see if there's any type of relationship between these two variables. Okay, as we can see, um, obviously there is a type of relationship because um, you can see this upward trend here, which kind of, even though it's not perfect, forget about these two things, but generally it's quite, it's a, it's quite a um, positive correlation, yeah, because um, as one thing increases, so it scores on the stress questionnaire, so the higher stress we have, as one thing increases, um, our um, days off from work also increases as well. So they're quite positively correlated. So the question asks us, what does figure one tell you about the relationship between stress and illness? So it's for two marks, okay? So remember, we are not going to town here. We're not gonna be spending 10 minutes on this question. Highest you'll spend is four minutes. So a mark a minute, that's two, min two minutes, plus two for thinking time. So two bits of information that you'll need to write here for two marks. So first thing, you need to state what type of correlation it shows. Is it a positive or is it a negative? That's for one mark. So there is a positive correlation. And then for another mark, you say as the um, stress scores increase, um, the number of days off work in a year through illness also increases as well. So tell us a bit more information about this positive correlation. That's it. Full stop. Yeah, let's move on. Outline one strength and one weakness of using correlations in stress research. So that's four marks. So we know we're going to get two marks for our one strength and we're going to get another two marks for our one weakness. So how we work it out is we state the strength and have a bit of ex explanation and then state a weakness and have a bit of explanation to that as well. That's how we're going to get our four marks. Again, we shouldn't be spending longer than six minutes. So mark a minute, four marks plus two, six minutes to answer this question. So we can have, for example, as a strength, um, it can study. So remember, the key thing is in stress research. So in stress research, obviously, because it's going to be unethical, for example, to induce stress on people to see how many days off work they're going to take, we can say that we can actually study relationship between variables that occur naturally. Yeah. So um, stress occurs naturally. and um, we, we, we're basically not inducing anything, we're just basically putting two things together so we can go to personnel, that's the HR department, and say, how many days off sick has this person had? Can you report how stressed you feel? Yeah, so two variables um, that occur naturally, we can measure, okay? And we can say, for example, we can measure things that cannot be manipulated experimentally. Again, as I said, it will be unethical to um, actually induce stress on people yeah because it might cause them all sorts of psychological harm and stuff so we can by um studying a relationship between two variables that occur naturally we don't actually have to manipulate anything so therefore they can't say ha huh, you lot are horrible because you lot cause them psychological harm so that's our strengths basically yeah our weaknesses for example um when you're talking about correlational studies guys always 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 talk about the fact that they tell they, they show that two variables have a relationship however we cannot establish cause and effect we can't say that one thing causes another thing because there could be all all sorts of factors that can, could affect why that person may take off days off work for example it could not just be what goes on stress at home it could be genetic for example 
Um, it could be that person is more prone to getting certain certain types of illnesses because it's in their genes and all sorts of inf all sorts of stuff can affect us um, becoming ill. It may not just be stress. So um, a nice one to use for weaknesses is always that we cannot establish the cause and effect because we don't know. We can't. We know there's a relationship between the two of them, but that's all it tells us. There could be other factors involved. OK, so make sure you use that for your weakness as well. Outline and evaluate research into relationship between immune system and stress related illnesses. Now, this hasn't been asked in four years, this question, since 2010. So be, be, beware. I'm not saying that this question is going to come up because nobody knows what questions are going to come up um, in summertime. However, just saying it hasn't been up for a, a while. But I'm not going to go and talk through this in this lecture. I'm going to talk about it specifically just in lecture 2B because I've actually written this 12 mark essay and um, yes, I've put myself out on the line. I've written it using just those two studies. Again, we're not racking our brains here and killing ourselves, remembering too, too many studies. So I'm actually going to be going through step by step how I've done this in lecture 2B. So make sure you check out this lecture for how I wrote this A grade essay very, very easily just using two studies. OK, so we're going to skip through. Sandy and Vandita. Now, when you start seeing names like any any names that the psychology paper gives to you, we know it's an application question. So when you are answering this question, you make sure you're involving the people. Say so that it could be any names. It could be Sanjit. It could be Veronica, Jamie. Who cares? Yeah, just talk about them in your answer because that's what they want you to do. You're not going to get the marks that you need. For example, the full marks if you eliminate talking about them at all. So be aware what application questions are. And generically, it's the ones that have names of people. So let's look at this. Sandy and Vanita play for the same netball team. Two weeks ago, while playing in a competition, they both grazed their elbows. So grazing elbows, some type, a type of illness, sickness or something like that. OK, it's just it's just a cut or something. But we know it's linking into stress and the immune, and immune system. Vendita's wound is healing well, but Sandy's wound is taking much longer to heal. OK, Sandy's very worried about the plans for her wedding and her forthcoming house move. That is the little clue here that they're looking They're talking about the stresses now that Sandy's going through and why Sandy's wound is taking much longer to heal. Now, when it comes to healing or anything fixing, it's down to our immune system. Yeah. Back to our white blood cells again. Our white blood cells are responsible for healing us, basically, and getting us back to normal. OK, so what happens is when we get a cut or a graze, our white blood cells rush to that particular area and that's where the healing takes place. But if we're going through some kind of stress, we know that our white blood cells are not going to be functioning properly. So it might not be that many white blood cells coming to that particular wound and healing it. Yeah, because we know the different chemicals that are going on in our immune system. We've got the, all the cortisol and all sorts of stuff going on. on yeah. So that is the absolute reason why Sandy's wound is probably taking longer to heal because she has a lot more cortisol going through her system because of her plans for her wedding. That is a big stressor and her forthcoming house move. Apparently moving house is like the biggest stress anyone can actually ever have. OK, so using your knowledge of psychology, explain why Sandy's wound is taking longer to heal than Vendita's. Um, Four marks. So you basically talk about Sandy and her chronic stresses that she's going through, talk about cortisol, and that's going for a system which is basically suppressing the function of her immune system and the white blood cells, hence it's not coming to the wound to, he to, heal, to heal it as fast as it should. Whereas Vendita is not basically um, going through any stresses, all she has, all, it really seems that Vendita ha only has to worry about her netball team and her netball game and stuff. So, um, but because she's not going through any stresses, her immune system is working fine. So therefore, her wound will heal much quicker. Four marks should not spend longer than six mark, um, six minutes on this question. A mark a minute plus two. Get in, get out. OK, make sure you use the people and their scenarios and explain it. Use psychological terms like cortisol, um, immune system, white blood cells, etc. to explain your answer. Yep, to make it psychological. 
A doctor has been given a new drug to test, which is intended to help boost the immune system and help prevent people from getting colds. Oh, that's nice. So no more um, ginger and lemon. How have psychologists investigated the relationship between stress and the immune system? Now for four marks, how have psychologists? So this question here, every time you see how, it's basically what method did have they used, yeah? And what do we have? Let's go back. Let's look at our key study, Kelcott Glazer, or we can use malarkey. We have a natural experiment, for example. So let's focus on that. That's all we need to focus on. So let's go back to the question. So how are psychologists? Kelcott Glazer has investigated the relationship between stress and the illness system by using natural experiments. And then just a brief explanation of what she done about medical students and stuff. And that will technically be it. You don't need to go to town on this four marks. Just talk about Kelcott Glazer and the method that she used, natural experiments. Well, it's a natural experiment because it was done in a naturalistic setting. They'd done a sample before and a sample during the examinations. Full stop. Yeah, that's our four marks. Easy four marks done. Okay. And again, I want to reiterate to you that we still just are only focusing on these two studies, Malarkey and Kelcott Glazer. So... Any questions again on any of these? Again, these are all the examination questions I've ever been asked on stress related illness and immune system. So, any problems or any issues, please do put a um, write a comment for me on YouTube. And our next um, lecture is going to be um, 2B for looking at our 12 mark questions. So, a lot of us seem really scared and oh my gosh it's a 12 mark question. But I'm going to show you exactly how easy it can be. And there's a particular formula an easy quick way quick fix to get out of it and to still score an a grade for these essays so um i'll see you in lecture 2b bye bye